Hello everyone, Pally Time here, and welcome back to Pathfinder and the Wrath of the Righteous. I released an initial video for this game and gave you guys the choice. If we hit a like threshold, we would continue the series, and if we did not, it would just be a one and done. Oh, hold on, let me turn the light on in here for you. That's better. You guys knocked it out of the park! Thank you so much. I promised that I would start working on it when I got back from vacation, and this was the very first video uh, that I'm working on. So I've kept my word. I'm good. I'm good for it. I promise. Last episode, we made a tiefling druid named Liz, and I did mention that I was going to go back and change some things with my character creation, and I did. However, let me give you a brief recap to lead you into this episode. After being picked up and brought into a town square that was abruptly attacked by a giant demon that killed a dragon, we were pushed into the center of, I guess it's like the catacombs underneath the town or something. It's kind of a weird situation. Down there, we found our first two companions, Sela, the brave shield-wearing warrior, and Camellia, who I think is some kind of cleric. As we venture deeper into the caverns, we also came across two other interesting companions, Winduag and Lan. The two of them were in here searching for a heavenly sword, one which we found and were able to summon after experiencing a very intense vision. However, we do have a new companion by our side that we did not have last time. And that's why I'm zoomed in. I didn't want to spoil it. Welcome Hammond, our bear. <laughs> and he's a monster, dude. He's actually insane. He hard carried the group the entire way in here. And I can't wait for you to see him in combat. Hammond is our bear companion that we get for being a druid. I read through a lot of the comments that you guys left. I also asked for some advice on Twitter about some just various Pathfinder things. And I just wanted to, to uh, give a quick thank you to everyone that decided to Brave help out adventure. on those avenues. Uh, it was certainly insightful. This game was very overwhelming at the beginning. Uh, I did change some stuff with Liz. She is slightly different. For instance, my charisma, I decided to go ahead and max it out at 20 instead of 18. And we kind of balanced some other things out to help that. I did see a lot of comments saying that wisdom is the main casting modifier for druids, and you guys are correct. However, being a face speaker, we actually use charisma. So don't worry. Don't worry. We're doing okay. We're keeping track of that. I went from being neutral good to chaotic neutral, just like what the shepherd from Mass Effect. I didn't want to kind of pigeonhole myself into always trying to do the good thing. If someone pisses me off, I want to be able to react on that. I think it's more fun for everyone to watch in certain situations. So we did swap that out as well. And then of course, um, in our spell book, we have a com companion. H however, I got, however I got Hammond out here, I actually don't know. He was just here when we started the game, but we have that instead of a nature uh, aspect or whatever it was called before. Other than that, the only other thing that changed is we actually failed the skill check. So Sheila is a little on the uh, fatigued side as we are venturing forward. Whereas in our previous romp through this area, she was not fatigued at all. Our adventurers gather together after some time to rest and gather their thoughts after seeing a bright heavenly sword manifest in the hands of Liz. Let us move forward. Mobility check of 14 to get across. Can we do it? The mongrel did it. And before we get too far into this as well, uh, I wanted to think we have some new channel members that just jumped on and are supporting the channel that way. Thank you guys so much. It kind of shows me everyone's name. I don't want to say everyone's first and last name. You know what I'm saying? But I see you and I appreciate you. In the, oh, combat log is going to be documented. Okay, that's good. Uh, Windowag is going to be our first character up to attack with the bow. She should be able to hit from pretty far. Although, are we surprised by these guys dropping down? Because I'm only able 
to move. Interesting. We'll move her forward. Hammond is in play and once again can only move. Well, Hammond is pretty tanky. He's actually set up to be a... Um, there was like a bunch of different subclasses I could have taken or like, more like personality traits I could have taken for my animal companion. And he went with the one that was the tankiest. I think it was called Bulwark or something like that. So he's going to be on the front line with Sila quite often. Um, we have Liz in the back minding her own business. I wanted to show you guys some of our other spells today because I didn't get very much of a chance to show you before. I think the only spell we showed off previously was Root, correct? I didn't even show off some of our cantrips, so I'm going to make sure that we do a little bit more casting in today's episode. All right, everyone's kind of been moved into place. I'm pretty okay with this setup. Windowog now is able to attack the giant spider in front is going to be... Actually, I'm going to aim for the one in the back. The giant spider appears to be the parent of the young one. Kill the weak! No match for me. <laughs> that does connect. Only two AC on the spider in the back. That's going to be Windowog's turn. Now, the young giant spider gets to... Oh, did that... Was that a natural 20? On to... Camellia. All right. All right. This is what you need to see. The main camera material. Hammond goes in for the swing. Oh, I built it up. So, three attacks. Can you believe it? He could swing three times. Yes, he missed two of them, but that's okay. He's still learning. You know, he's still growing. We're all very proud of him. I want to see nothing but comments about how proud of Hammond we are down in the comments. The well, Camellia gets a swing blood. of her own. Not quite enough to take down the giant spider. Sela in the position, however, is going to swing. And that's going to be round three of combat, the final round of combat. The enemies seem like they're getting a little bit bigger down mm, here. This way. Maybe we would want to con uh, consider, you know, stealthing around a little bit. Oh, shadows. Embrace. Does this work if I highlight everybody? Are we trying to stay in the shadow? Oh, indeed we are. So let's slow our gait a little bit. Look at what's on the ground a little bit more and try to push through this area with a little bit more caution. I don't want to run headfirst into every enemy quite like that one. We do find some gold on the ground as well as some coal and a inflict light wound scrolls. There's another mobility check to our left. Let's make a move for that. Now, as long as you have the entire party selected, I believe each individual character is involved in the mobility check. Oh. See, we have an enemy up ahead. We can sit up really well for this because they haven't seen us yet. So if we want to take a character like Windowog, a nice archer, and I mean, our, our other friend over here, what's his name, Lan, is also a great candidate for this. We can move the two of them together, highlight them both, and have them attack the small earth You've element. Crossed the wrong line. I was hoping they would actually connect with some of those attacks, but here we are. You are today's sacrifice. So I can move into melee range with hearts. this, but on surprise, I haven't been able to attack yet. You won't there we go. Me. Now we're connecting. Okay, maybe I was just being weird before. We're going to do a charge with Hammond. Actually, he's not quite able to make it that far. We'll just move him up to the front line so he can soak up some of that damage. Also, Hammond is using a dodge feat, giving him even more AC than what he gets baseline. So he should be a pretty tanky mother trucker on the front line. Let's go ahead and try to cast a damaging spell for once in our life. This is just a cantrip. It's a spell level zero. Thank you for clarifying what that was down in the comments. This is just divine zap. It's a 1d3, so uh, not much damage, but if we can get in range. Hey, one damage. That's slightly better than 
Nothing. Unfortunately, Sila pretty far in the back this time, trying to work her way forward. Camellia is in melee open. range, though, and that 14 is going to connect, but the damage still on the low side. I probably should have done the spirit weapon enchantment. In fact, let's just go ahead and do it now. I should have done it before I attacked. I really thought that she was going to have enough to take down the elemental without it my fault my fault hopefully this shot connects no missing but the second one does now hammond on the front line with three attacks into the small elemental the first one misses the second one misses and the hammond it's okay you're doing great hammond no one's gonna say anything bad about you <laughs> I have another spell I wanted to try, and it's called Flare. It creates a burst of light. If you cause a light to burst in front of a single creature, this creature is dazzled for one minute, unless it makes a successful fortitude save. Now, I assume enemies are creatures, right? It doesn't count my team. And I don't think he was dazzled, but he doesn't hit Hammond. Now, Camellia can move up. Your blood. There's the stab, but actually not connecting either. Every strike count. The final range attack from Lan is what's gonna do it. Hey guys, we might have we might need to have a talk about our accuracy. The road calls me. We might need to I'll work on that. On a body at the end of the hallway here is a wand of cure light wounds. We will pick that up. I think this was a dead end and I have to go back. Where? We have another insect situation on our hands and it doesn't see us again. I wonder if Hammond can just get right up close to him. I'm gonna try to just send Hammond forward. <laughs> How does stealth work? There's no like frontal cone or anything. Are they just doing passive perception checks? It looks like Hammond missed his swing. Oh, but luckily for him, the giant centipede off to the side also missed theirs. Lan is up. I'm actually gonna have land fire at the centipede in the back. His shot is gonna connect, not only with that, but with the fly in the front line. Another spitting giant centipede coming up from the back. Hammond has three swings again. What is gonna connect? And he just stomps it into the ground. I know how attacking works. Is there anything special in here that I, that I'm totally gonna go back and read this in editing. I'm gonna know everything. How that last attack went is literally how every attack went with Hammond leading up to that, like me replaying what we went through. Okay, we were attacked. I turned on a setting that pauses the game whenever we spot an enemy or when combat starts. And I think the one where we spot an enemy isn't actually working, but when combat starts sure was. Looks like they have surprise this time. Giant spider moving towards Sela. At least our tank is in the front. Window egg pretty far back. How close do you have to be to make an attack connect? So she has point blank. What if we turn off the force move of point blank? Then she can fire outside of that range, but I believe it had an accuracy penalty. And it looks like that accuracy penalty was not enough to stop that shot from connecting. All right, this is it. Hammond's gonna be a hero. Let's zoom in on him. Main camera material going in on the giant spider and like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. He's gonna be a great addition to our team. I'm just really trying to sell you on it. I don't want anyone to second guess the addition of Hammond. Another young giant spider. We know from our last encounter that uh, the young of this species are significantly weaker. I guess that's not too much of a surprise. Noticing that while I'm sneaking, we're moving a lot slower even in combat. Looks like the entire party was not spotted. Only those that were uh, attacking were actually brought out of stealth. Very interesting. Uh, we will turn Point Blake on for land because he's very close. Fire off a shot that is going to connect. The second one does not. Sila with her first swing is gonna chop. The spider in half. You any loot? None. I want to show you this ability we got after the 
vision that we had with the angel and the illuminated sword that we held in our hand. Light of the angels, you summon a soothing light warming the hearts of your allies and obscuring the vision of your enemies. Every ally in a 20 foot radius gets one temporary hit point for one hour and the enemies become dazed for 1d4 rounds. Look at that. All we have to do is buff our party and it lasts for an hour. That's beautiful. You know, maybe wielding a heavenly sword isn't that bad. We got a cutscene on our hands. Looks like the window egg wants to talk to us. Look how Hammond is watching this go on. Everyone else walked forward, but Hammond has his eye on his friend. Windowag glances at Lan, who is fixing his slipped bowstring, and quickly walks over to you. Her cat-like eyes glow from beneath her hood. Listen here, you. I don't know who you are or where you came from, but you and I are the only two people here who see things clearly. That's why I'm asking you, don't show the light of heaven to Saul. Saul is their, like, camp leader who we're going to visit because we think he can help us get out of here. When we saw the light, Lan was literally like, he's gonna love this! Yeah, I'm gonna go with number one. Lan said he was sure that the light should be shown. Lan... Window and grimaces and a guttural husky snarl unfurls in her throat. He wants to play the hero. His first idea, if you remember, was to grab the sword and run headlong into the maze. Does that sound like a plan to you? To me, it sounds like suicide. The worst part is that the tribe might actually take his words to heart and follow where he leads. But Windowag, don't you want to save the kids that are lost in the maze? Wasn't that the plan? I do, but I'm not going to risk the future of the tribe for the sake of a few stupid kids. Oof. Chief Sol is hesitant, and for good reason. He also understands how dangerous this is for the tribe. Land's the only one who benefits from these childish games of heroism. I'll go alone if I have to, and I'll find them, or whatever's left of them. Without any heroics, relying only on myself, risking my own life, window act slows you and your friends you can come with me perhaps we can make it to the end of the maze together and find a way out to the surface but i thought you considered the mongrels great warriors wouldn't this be fine we have this great weapon we could push through the descendants of great warriors window act says I believe that my people are worthy of greatness, that we are strong and can do many things. That's why we were chased down here. We scared people. But it's one thing to go hunting in the caves and another to fight in the shield maze. When Nuad leans closer, her pupils dilating. I've been there. I've spent my whole life training so I can make it through all the way to the end. There were more of us trackers at the start. We were young and we were stupid. What's a couple of monsters when there's a whole world out there waiting for us? That's what we thought, but we weren't prepared. The maze isn't just a physical challenge. It's cunning and full of traps. It's dark as the primordial night. And if you close your eyes and listen, you can hear whispers right behind you and soft singing in the distance that seems to rise and fall with the beating of your heart. Windowag looks away. I had to learn from my friends' mistakes. I had to step over their bodies and go further. I don't want to have to do that again. And it'll all happen again if a crowd of ill-prepared fighters bursts into the maze with no idea of where they're going. All because Lan believes that a glowing sword will solve all of our problems. Oof. She's got good points, Window Egg. She's got good points. 
I'll think about it. Let's keep going. Windowag nods. Don't show the chief the light. I'll lead you through the maze to the surface, I swear. She just doesn't want her people to die. Or as few of her people as possible to die. And I think with that, we actually made it to the end of the cave. Or at least this tunneled area of the cave. To Neithholm. Uh, just blackness up ahead as we venture forward, but mongrels on each side of the road. Well, isn't this a warm welcome? Your first impression of the mongrel village is of a squalid dump with the odors to match. Unblinking, glowing eyes watch you from the gloom and deformed shadows slope between the huts. You see some mongrels gutting white eyeless fish, while others are repairing fishing nets. All the signs of normal village life, but tense expectation hangs in the air. A heavy set aged mongrel slowly shuffles his way towards you. The hair on his head grows in limp, wispy strands, and his face has a distinctly rat like appearance with pronounced teeth and you can hear rattling sounds in his chest with every breath that he takes. One of his eyes is white, fully scarred by cataracts, while the other gleams with moisture. Uplanders! Ugh. End times are a punish indeed. Chief Soul, we found the angel sword, and we found the one who can wield it. Oh God, <laughs> land points at you. <laughs> She had a vision, and now the angel sword, together with the light of heaven, are somehow inside of her. Gather the tribe, everyone who can hold a weapon. The young ones are still alive. We can go save them. Oh, shit. Soul raises his hand with ragged, broken fingernails. Ah, learn. Always dreaming, always talking. You're too hasty, too hasty for your own good. It's going to get you in trouble. Saul so eyes you up and down. An uplander with the light of heaven. That's too good for us. Our kind don't have good things happen. There's always a catch. Lon trusts people because he likes to believe. Isn't that right, Lon? I'm the chief. I don't work on faith. Show me the light. Oh, <laughs> is this our first big decision? Throughout the game, you will see occasion you will occasionally encounter colored options marked as associated with a specific mythic path. These are dialogue branches that embody the spirit of a particular manifestation of mythic power. In the earlier stages of the game, these options must be selected in order to gain the opportunity to set out on this corresponding mythic path. Once your mythic path is set, unique, unique alternatives inaccessible to other mythic paths may be available to you. So, I could go, go for a lawful, requires angel mythic path, but we're not locked into this. Reveal the light of heaven and proclaim that land speaks the truth. Or, land is mistaken. We didn't find a sword. There's no reason to rush all of your men into a maze to die. What if we say, I'll help you find the lost mongrels in the maze, but you can quit hoping for a magical sword. I'm going to try that. It seems... It seems a lot better than just calling him a liar right in front of everybody. Windwag lets out a satisfied laugh. At last, someone is talking sense. Lance says, you don't understand. It's holy light. It'll scare off the monsters that dwell in the maze. Land drops his voice. Listen, I don't personally believe in this angelic light, but Saul does. Show him. It won't cost you anything. Um, Lan is mistaken. We did not 
find the sword. Lan whips around to look at you stunned. He clenches his fist for a moment as if planning to shake the truth out of you, but he quickly gets a handle of himself. I don't know why you're lying. No doubt you have your reasons, but I know it's a lie and you know it. And Windu knows it. Lan turns to Windowog. Tell him, Windu! You performed a chaotic action. Yeah, that's fine. We're chaotic neutral. That didn't feel terrible. <laughs> Windowog stares blankly back at him. I saw the light shining between the rocks and then it went out. Lan saw what he wanted to see. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Telling the truth, says Windowog. Oh, I could say you saw some kind of light near me and you thought that it meant I was an angel. I had an angel sword. You were mistaken. There's no need to drag other people into it. I don't want the blood of gull gullible mongrels on my hands or say nothing. Yeah, bro, it was just a light. I think it was just a light. You know, I hit my head really hard. I'm not too sure what I actually saw, you know. The, the scaly half of Lon's face is expressionless as always. But the human half is twisted by the pain of betrayal. Oh, no. I see how it is. You and Window have worked everything out between yourselves. Lan barks a hollow laugh. I was such an idiot. Lan beats his fist against his forehead, causing new a few scales to fly off. An idiot who decided to trust you. Fuck. Everybody around me said they didn't want to go anywhere or save anyone, but I didn't believe them. I always have to take things further than anyone else. Isn't that right, Chief? Fine. I see how things are. I don't need any more convincing. Lan offers a crooked smile. Chief Saul. Please, Lan. Miracles are not meant for us. We're the tribe. We wait. If you're one of us, you'll wait. You're not going anywhere. Uplanders, rest now. There's a hut over there. You can rest there. Lan is silent. His eyes shifting from you to Saul to Wendoag. You made the right choice. It was the lesser of two evils, and now rest so we can be at our best. When we go to the maze, I promise to lead you to the surface, and I will. Well, looks like not only did we get ourselves into a difficult predicament, we also got ourselves our first level up. I'm going to keep the passive level ups on the rest of the party. I'm mostly going to be crafting my own character because I want to see what the game naturally uh, pre prefers for them to pick up. Kind of learn by doing. With my level up, I put points into use magical devices, persuasion, lore for nature, and knowledge of the world. And I think that's all I get. Pretty, pretty easy level up for Druid. Meanwhile, Sila gets Lay on Hands. Nice. That's a big heal. And it looks like persuasion and knowledge of the world as well as mobility were increased for her look at her negative five mobility oof for camellia shaman spirit hunter level two she gets hex shaman learns a number of magical tricks called hexes which grant her powers or weaken foes trickery and stealth being increased oh we might have some fun with that. Also gaining Ice Plant. X grants the Shaman plus two natural armor, bonus to AC. This effect leaves the Shaman skin thick to the touch. So I just precast that before we get into trouble and she has plus two AC. Nice. Wow, Monk gets a lot of stuff at level two. Zen Archer bonus feat. 
So this is because he's a level one Zen Archer, right? Where do I see that? Yes, perfect. Oh, it seems like Monk, Monk, Monk gets a lot of stuff all at one time. That's great. He also gets Way of the Bow. At second level, Zen Archer gains weapon focus as a bonus feat with one type of bow. Also points into athletics and mobility as well as perception. I hope I didn't hurt his feelings too much. I hope he stays on our team. Oh, also picking a precise shot. This is something I'm going to be picking up on my druid as well, as per the many, many, many recommendations from you guys. Okay, he's going to be way of the longbow. That sounds really cool. Windowog, level two fighter. She's going to be getting deadly aim as well as bravery. Starting at level two, fighter gains plus one bonus on will saves against fear. This bonus increases by plus one for every four levels beyond the second. Let's not forget Hammond gets to level up. By the way, Bulwark, I think I said that earlier, was the type of pet that he was. I guess he's just getting increases here. Let's give him even more mobility. I want him zooming across the battlefield. I also like the idea of him being very stealthy. These might be my two focuses. Keep him moving quick and keep him moving quiet. If I hit B, I can open up our skill book and prepare my memorized spells for the next day. If I want to have multiple casts of Snowball, I actually have to select the ability multiple times, which I think is actually really interesting. Snowball would be a damaging ability, and I do have a feat to increase my effectiveness with that. But could I have an additional pet? Is that a thing? Is this how I resummon Hammond if he dies? Because, I mean, I feel like that's pretty important. I like the idea of Acid Maul a lot. Your animal companion's bite attack deals an additional 1d4 damage with acid. That sounds sick. Do you actually bite, though, or are you just clawing, my dude? I think he's just clawing. We can do the same thing for Camellia. She had two Cure Light Wounds, so I'm going to keep those there and then add in Bless as well. Bless only lasts for one minute per level. In Baldur's Gate 3, I would precast this because it lasts much longer, but it looks like this will likely be my first action when we get into combat. There are some little things around town that it seems like we can loot without getting into too much trouble. What's in wait for me there, I wonder? <laughs> I love how crazy her voice sounds sometimes. Another cutscene. This is Horgus Worm. Finally, someone from the surface. I was beginning to lose hope. An elderly man in expensive, but not ostentatious clothes approaches you. His face is peppered with several healed cuts and bruises and twisted in an expression of extreme discontent. Allow me to introduce myself my name's Horgus Gworm. Yes, that Gworm. You no doubt have heard of me if you've spent any time at all in the city. I have a business proposition for you. Uh, uh y y your name tells me nothing. I don't know anything about the city, bruh. You truly are fresh arrived in the city, then. You couldn't have picked a worse time, that's for certain. Only just arrived and the city's been raised to rubble. You should know that you are looking at one of the richest and most distinguished men in Canabras. I may not be as well known as certain swaggering loudmouths who spend their lives traipsing from one ball to the next, but Gworm Trading Company is one of the pillars of our city, I'll have you know. Did you see the marquees in the square? I paid for those. Tried any festival delicacies? You have Hogus Gworm to thank for that. So, what's the business proposition? I don't know what's happening on the surface right now, but I am determined to find out. 
You have no intention of seeing out the rest of your days in this village, I suspect. We must find a route back to the surface, to the city, if there's anything left of it. You look like you've spent your entire life surviving in the wilderness. I can't think of a better recommendation given the circumstances. You are strong. It will be no trouble to you, but I, alas, am not as fit as I once was. I can't go crawling about through caves, playing at scouts. My proposition is simple. Lead me back to the city, and I shall pay you a thousand gold coins. I suggest we help the man. It is good to have friends amongst the cannabis elite. I can say money first. <laughs> Diplomacy of 16. 2,000 gold! Yes, that's what we'll do. Succeeded at a, at a diplomacy check. Orgus gaze is piercing. Are you taking advantage of my dire circumstances? <laughs> Very well. M make it two two thousand. All right, but we're not going anywhere without the money first. I would gladly pay in advance, but all my wealth is up on the surface. Fear not. The word of a Gworm is worth more than platinum. <laughs> Ask anyone, Hargus Gworm has never reneged on a deal. All right, fine. We'll help you get to the surface. No problem, but... Splendid. In the meantime, I shall sit here in the village. All right. Take care. Do I have to come back here to get him? He's not going to be walking through with us by the sounds of things. Go on, go on. Don't forget our agreement. When you find the way out, be sure to tell me. I guess that answered my question. It's like he knew. The Gorm family seek its power twists and warps all who possess it once a... Oh. I didn't get to read that. That's, a, that's another message for... Highly time from the future that he gets to enjoy. Looks like there is a vendor in town if we wanted to sell something. Let's see what you have to trade. Although, I don't really know exactly what I'm looking for here. I'm not super familiar with, uh, you know, what I have of value. I mean, we're not using this crossbow or this camera. We might use a greatsword later. I don't know, but I'm not using it right now. So this is 201 gold coming to me. Do you actually have 201 gold? Or is this going to be one of those things where we have to, like... Okay, it doesn't look like it's divinity. It looks like they just have the money. That's probably easier. Oh, she sells a heavy flail. Can Sila use that? That would be sick, actually. Wait, can I see that if I click on her? Flail? Heavy flail? Does heavy flail take two hands? It does 1d10? I'm buying a heavy flail. I can also pick up a heavy crossbow for Winduag. That would be an upgrade over the longbow. I don't think it makes sense to swap that out for land, though. Simply because he just had that upgrade to his longbow proficiency. Okay, we went through with it. We have a heavy flail for Sila. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize it was going to take her shield away. It said primary hand. I thought it said primary or secondary. Oh, no. That's okay. We'll just see how it goes. We'll figure that one out. And the heavy cross crossbow or window wag. She should be able to do some pretty good damage with that. Oh, I didn't tell you the best part about Hammond. He wears bracers. <laughs> oh. Looks like there's a few more satchels of loot scattered throughout the town here. I'm probably going to gather these up and then take the party in for a nice rest. After we, you know, sell everything at a vendor one more time. 
these items that say the merchant would pay well for them are not being paid well for at the merchant. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll hold on to these for a little while. All right, let's call it a night. It's time. We're heading out now. Lon won't get in our way. Gwendua breathes in deeply through her nose, her eyes narrowing in concentration, like she's trying to taste the air to detect even the faintest scents. Finally, she gives you an approving nod. It's time to what? To get you out of here. I'm keeping my word. Gwendoag looks around. It's quiet now. The village has settled down. I know the shortest route to the maze. We'll take a boat. No one will see us. We're still going to save the missing mongrels, right? Gwendoag frowns. What? Uh, them? They're probably dead already. But if we meet anyone on the way, we won't just walk on by. At the end of the day, they are of the tribe. Lon won't get in the way, but where is he then? On the way to his death if he decided to go in alone. Or maybe he's in a hole somewhere crying about how lonely he is. I don't care either way. Are you sure the maze is the only way to the surface? When do I hiss his an irritation? Do I look like someone who doesn't know what she's talking about? Yes, I'm sure. There might be other ways, but not anywhere near here. I've never made it all the way through the maze, but every time I've smelled the change in the air. Anyone who can't has no business being in there. They're as good as dead. You don't believe me, you can wait for another guide to show up, but no one apart from me will get you to where you need to go. Okay, fine, let's go then. Window nods. Right. And another thing. You could have chosen not to listen to me, but you did. That means you have real strength in you. A strong person can take the truth, even if they don't like it. And the truth was on my side, and I just want to say... Windwork averts her eyes. Thank you. You saved the tribe from a, a stupid mistake. They're all alive right now because of you. Eh, I guess that does make it a little bit easier to hear. Now let's go to the boats. We'll get there fastest by the water. And that's going to be where we end tonight's episode. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep these at about an hour recording time. And then edit down our episode from there. We're heading into the maze. To try to get back up to the surface. Will we make it there? I certainly hope so. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on the way out. Especially if you made it this far in the video. I mean, come on. See you guys again soon. Goodbye.